Amen. Yeah. It's been a long week. Long time to get here, I tell you. Oh. Glad to see all of you here. I, I know it's bad weather out there, and I'm glad you're here. And that's no putting down on people that are not here because it is bad weather. If, you know, if it's bad weather at your house, if you got good sense, you ain't going to get out, right? If you got good sense, you'd be crazy. You, might. <laughs> you know, and it's good to have good sense. Anyway, that's what my wife keeps trying to tell me. It'd be good to have good sense, honey. Yeah. No, I do jokes on them a lot. Ashley and Carrie and aggravate them some here, but i tell you what, buddy, it's been a long week. I'll just say this, and please indulge me, because I aggravate them sometimes. But just on three different occasions this week, I, I, I read a lot at night when, when everybody's kind of settling down. Actually, she's been having to doctor a sick dog or a hurt dog. And so she'd get up, and, and she'd come in there to my desk. On three different times, I know there's a weird look on my face, because it's, it's been a hard week in, in my brain trying to, Get ready and know what to say, you know, during the funeral. And three different times she said, uh, you know, because I had that thousand mile stare, and she said, uh, Poppy, are you okay? Are you okay? She was checking on me. You know, I got to think about that. You know, like we got her when she was three, and here she is uh, now, near grown. And, and I thought, you know, Lord, Karen and I, we're up in years, and you know, something happened to us. Okay. Because I was thinking about the, those people are young. Teresa Dameron is young in my mind, you know, in, in years too. Some of y'all a lot older than me. Yeah, that whole row is. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I ain't going to. But, uh, you know, I actually went on back in the room and I thought, Lord, thank you. I, I know something happened to Karen and I, and we are older. That young and right there, you know, she, she's got grit and steel. I have to fuss at her sometimes, but I'll tell you what I think. I think if something happened to me and Karen, and things got rough, she could throw Carrie up on her shoulder and fight hell off with a squirt gun. That's what I think. I appreciate you. I want you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And we're going to look at the ninth and the tenth verses today. And I need to tell you, as I got uh, to this place, this was supposed to be one uh, sermon to cover this. And as I continued to work in it and pray and agonize, it became three. And I'm not going to give all of them to you here today, but I broke it up in three parts. And we're going to uh, talk about this over a three-week period. The title of this sermon today, uh, I titled it, What's Love Got to Do With It? Some of you old rockers, you know where that come from, and we'll look at that in a minute here. But will you pray with me? Lord, we ask you to use your word. Help us to understand what uh, the God kind of love is. Help us with that, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, some of you remember old Tina Turner, and some of you will say you didn't because you think you're too religious, you know. (laughs) Uh, uh, she and her husband Ike y'all remember Ike Turner good looking smooth talking slow walking yeah Ike Turner Ike and Tina were rock stars in the 60's and the 70's but Ike was abusive to Tina and I've read her autobiography it's it's rough Uh, so one day you know what she did as the old uh, blues song says, old, old, Led, old Led Billy, the blues singer, sang, he said, uh, this, is, this is how you can describe what she did. She took the caddy and left him a mule to ride. That's what she did. And this song, What's Love Got to Do With It? Well, uh, that song launched her back. This was her comeback song. Okay? And she had a far bigger career Without Ike, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, Ike's career ended right there. Okay? When he walked out of that courthouse, he was done. He was. But 
she had a far bigger career without Ike than she would have ever had with him. Now, here's a second little sermon. That just goes to show you that life for a person after getting out of a, an abusive relationship can flourish, okay? You understand that? Yeah, that's right. That's just true. Y'all remember that song? I, I, you know, and I put this title on the internet, and then somebody, I think it's Sonny Tackett, said, are you going to sing that? And <laughs> my wife said, no, you're not. <laughs> she, and she took, she put her 38 up and got a 44. <laughs> she said, you better not sing. Because see, back when we were both working at Southeastern Seminary at a, at a little gathering we did, I jumped up and did this song among all doctors of theology. You know, and my wife almost shot me that night. She's mad for three or four days. I was eating them want biscuits for two or three days and you know, break them out again. She's ready to kill me. So I'm not going to sing it, but y'all know that song, right? What's love got to do with it? What's love but a second-hand emotion? I bet you could burn that down, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who needs a heart when a, when a heart can be broken? Y'all remember that song? Come on now. But now listen. Listen to me. If, if, if Tina, if Tina Turner... And she wrote that song out of a bitter heart. I mean, really, she did. Or she sang it. Somebody else wrote it. But she, she took it, you know. And later on, she said she wished she hadn't. But she was going through a bad time. But it launched her. Made her famous. But if she had been talking to the Apostle Paul, and she asked Paul that question, uh, what's love got to do with it? Well, he would have told her. When it comes to living a sanctified life that honors God, love has everything to do with it, Tina. That's what he would have said. Love's got everything to do with it. See, friends, listen. The kind of love Tina Turner was singing about is a far lesser, lesser love than what Paul was talking about in these texts. In 1 Thessalonians. Love has everything to do with how we relate to one another as brothers and sisters because just like Paul said in another one of his letters, just like he stated in 1 Corinthians 13, he stated, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, and that's the exact, same exact word that he uses I'll tell you about it in just a minute. I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though, listen, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. That is very, very strong. Now, people have toned that down. They use it at weddings all the time. People read it, don't mean, they don't know what it means. That's strong. That's strong language when you read it. Well, these past several weeks, we've been, we've been talking about uh, spiritual warfare. If you'll remember from this book, 1 Thessalonians, we've looked at how Satan uses hindrances. And we looked at how he uses even the suffering in our life at times, and how he uses temptations to buffet the children of God and to buffet the church and, and, and trying to break it down, trying to, trying to keep it from being what it's supposed to be. We examine the fact, if you remember that, in order to overcome Satan, we have to stand firm in the Lord. You remember we talked about, and we have to stay in His Word, we have to pray, and we need to live a sanctified life, separated unto God. Today I want to continue uh, for a few moments here to speak about the sanctified life from 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 9, and 10. Now last week, I stated that we're to honor God with a sanctified life. And part of living a sanctified life is to live a life of sexual purity and avoid sexual immorality of any kind. Just leave it alone. And in continuing to, to instruct the Thessalonians here on how to live a sanctified life, uh, Paul 
goes away from the subject of lust and all the problems that it causes, and he picks up the subject of love and all the problems it solves. That, that's what he does here in this. And I, and I, and I want to look at this text together, and I want to consider uh, what love has to do with it, or what love has to do with a sanctified life. Listen to this. These, these two verses in here in 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, and 10. Now, as to the love of the brethren, and King James Bible says brotherly love, and I'll use that consistently after I read this. You have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed, you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, to excel still more. King James says, more and more. More and more. Do more and more. Okay. Now listen, back in chapter 3 though, that we looked at already, in verse 12, as part of Paul's prayer, if you remember for the Thessalonians, he had prayed that the Lord would make their love for one another increase and abound. Meaning, the word abound means to overflow like a river. If you remember, we talked about that. Now here in, in our text today uh, that I just read to you, Paul returns to the subject of love. Now before we examine the text that I read to you, the word translated love in the third chapter, the twelfth verse, is from a Greek word agape. And I have gotten so tired sometimes in life of hearing sermons about agape love that had nothing to do with what it means. It sounded like syrup being poured over your head and flies getting on you. I, I can't stand goose goose. I hate it. So I'm not doing that. I'm going to try to tell you what this means. All right? Because we, we need to know what the Bible says, not what culture says. All right? Listen. What agape love is, is a sacrificial love that does well and wishes well, no matter the circumstances. Ooh. Now, some people will tell you, I love you unconditionally. Next day, they're trying to kill you. Be careful with that, you know. No matter the circumstances, it is a love that disciplines and corrects, watch, harmful indulgences, and corrects bad behavior. No matter the cost to self, the person who loves the other person will risk intervention for the sake of the individual they love. And if you've ever done that, you know the odds are somebody's going to go to cussing at you. It's a love that demonstrates kindness, biblical kindness, benevolence, and, and it, it esteem. Builds people up. Even in the midst of stormy circumstances. Even, even in bad situations. It's a love of the mind and reason and choice. Now watch this. It is the God kind of love. Stay with me. God has decreed, God decreed to love sinners and sacrifice His Son that they might have eternal life. Lexi and I talked about that this morning. It's the highest level of love. This, this word represents the highest level possible because it's a God kind of love. Nothing surpasses it. There is no higher expression of love than the love of God watched toward us. We who are sinners. Right? Now, if you're here today and you're not a sinner, you can, just, you can go ahead and brave that rain out there and go on up there to Champs and eat lunch. But if you're a sinner, you hang here with me just a second. Because the truth is we, we really are utterly unworthy of being loved by God. Why? Because He is absolutely and completely and totally holy. Alright? The holy love the unholy with agape love and made the sacrifice to save us. Wow. Great Greek scholar, and i got to use some Greek here today to get this, and so please excuse that. I don't do that all the time. But, but W.E. Vines, he was well, maybe the best of the best. He defined this love of God towards sinners as, 
as an exercise of the divine will in deliberate choice. Now, I know some of my brothers don't like me to use the word choice, but that's what God did. In deliberate choice, made without assignable cause, made without any cause. God decided something without any real cause. Just like he told the Israelites, I'm not loving you because you're great. I'm loving you because I want to. Now, I paraphrase that. I'll, I'll, well, I'll look at it in the third week. Without any cause other than that which lies in the very nature of God Himself, to love the unlovable. That's in the nature of God. That's one of His attributes, if you want to have that illogical uh, concept. This divine choice of God is what Paul is talking about in Romans 5, 8, wherein he states, but God demonstrated His love, His agape love, that's the same word again, toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, he didn't tell you to wash and clean up and I might love you. He wasn't saying, now, but if you'll clean up real good, brush teeth, comb your hair, get a haircut, get out your new suit, I might go to the prom with you. That's not what he was saying. I can say it that way. He said, I'll take you to the prom stinking all. The Bible says sin stinks in the nostrils of God. That's exactly what he said. But he loved us while we were still sinners. To boil that down and to make it easy, especially for me to grasp, and sometimes when, when I'm trying to work on this stuff, my brains want to explode. I know that sounds weird, but, but, but agape love is a sacrificial love that cares, it gives, and works for another person's good, no matter how that person may respond. Okay? Or treat the one who has chosen to love them in such a sacrificial way. That's exactly what it means. That's what Jesus did for us. That is exactly, if you will, what uh, 3.12 here means in this verse First uh, Thessalonians 3.12 that God prayed He prayed for the Thessalonians to have and to have it in an overflowing manner that's amazing I want this to overflow He prayed now you might think now wait a minute CB now hold, hold, hold on there I thought you said agape love is the God kind of love that's the God love well I did because it is now, you know you think well I can't do it with, right now let me explain something here. It is the ultimate expression of love. It is the God kind of love. However, however, God's Word teaches us that we are to express, to share, if you want to say it that way, this kind of love as His children. Now listen to this. Don't get crazy yet. Only Christians can express this kind of love. Stay with me. Because right here is where a lot of sermons I've heard in Bible studies get messed up. They mess up right here. Frankly, because they don't do their homework. That's right. Only Christians possess the ability to express agape love. That's, that's just true. But now listen closely. Now stay with me a moment. I want you to get this. I have heard and you've heard too. You heard it said that lost people are not really able to love anyone. Look, that's just a foolish statement. Now that's a foolish statement to make. That, when a preacher says that, he has not spent any time uh, late at night working on this or asking God to help him or, 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 or just reading. It, it, that, that, that's foolish and it hurts people. It messes people up. Because then the next thing out of his mouth sometimes is say, so if you're somebody's daddy, you don't really love them. If you're not a Christian, that's hogwash. Now stay with me, please. There are two other Greek words. See, when we say love, we make it mean everything. We say, I love Cheerios. Or I love this. I love hot dogs. You know, we use love for everything, right? But, but Greek is precise. They were talking about that in Sunday school a week ago. 
There are two other Greek words for love that never appear in the New Testament. Never appear, not one time. One is eros, from which we get the word erotic. The other is storge. Storge. Now stay with me right here a minute. That is a natural love that arises, natural meaning everybody born on the earth can have it. Watch, stay with me. That is a natural love that arises from affection toward one's family. There it is. It is the love of a mother toward her children or a child toward her mother. It is the love of a father toward his wife or a son or a daughter. It's the love expressed by families for one another. Okay? Where there is that bind me together blood. That, you know, it's there. Storge. It's in the natural arena of life. It is due to storge love that we all know this old saying. You've heard it. Sometimes it's when people are about to fight, though, when they say it. They say stuff, and I've heard it, but in the deep south, where I come from, you better watch out because something, somebody's fixing to pull a knife or a gun a lot of times when they say this right here. You ever heard that old saying, blood's thicker than water? Now, somebody better be moving a lot of times when they hear that because war's about to break out, buddy. I've seen it. You've seen that? Y'all ever seen that up here in these mountains? <laughs> I watched <laughs> I watched Josie Wells the other night. <laughs> and he you know, in the movie Josie Wells, he comes out of those Missouri mountains, right? And that guy, you know, that was was dealing with him, he said, you know, when they said, You got I gotta kill that man, because he lives by the feud. And I couldn't help but think about here. <laughs> <coughs> Y'all know this is a feudal culture, right? Now, come on now, don't you lie? Deep South is too. They're just more sneaky. <laughs> Y'all just walk right in the courthouse and say, when court's over, I'm killing you. <laughs> Them Southerners are sneaky. They just go outside and wait like snakes. <laughs> but listen, listen. But people say that. Blood's thicker than water. And that's really where there's... That comes from this word, this natural word, storge. It really does. So don't dare let anybody tell you that your preacher said lost people can't love. Yes, they can. Lost men can love their children greatly. And so can lost mothers. That's crazy to say that. I mean, you've seen sacrificial people that didn't know Jesus. And you, well, they don't really love. Well, don't say stuff like that. That's wrong. Now, let me go back to this word agape because, like I said, this is expressed from the Christian heart. It is the God kind of love. Okay. Now, I told you earlier that Paul prayed for Christians to overflow with this kind of love for one another. That's what he did. Now, how is it possible for us to have this God kind of love as human beings? And that's a fair question. How is it possible? The reason is this. Here's the reason. God, the Holy Spirit, gives us the ability to love like this when He makes us God's children through the new birth of the blood of Christ. Okay? Now listen. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in My name, He will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance of all that I said to you. Now, one of the ways that the Holy Spirit teaches us to remember all things is to give us gifts of the Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about those worker gifts of the Spirit here. Stay with me. We identify these particular gifts as the fruit of the Spirit. Now, uh, these gifts are expressed in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and I'm sure there are more. This is just one expression. It's, it says there, but the fruit of the Spirit, and the first word is love, in the same word that this guy used. Same exact word. I got that love. That God kind of love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Okay? The word love there, like I said, it is agape. It's the same word. Same exact word. Same tense, actually. Okay? Now, Romans 5, 5. It says that God, watch, this is amazing. God has poured, 
this exact kind of love in the hearts of everyone and all who have become His children through the new birth. That's an absolute. Listen to it. Romans 5.5 5, The love, parenthetical, the agape love of God has been poured within our hearts through the Holy Ghost who has been given to us. It's poured into us when we're saved. It's this kind of love that Paul's talking about uh, in uh, chapter 4, 9, and 10, although, although when, he, when he uses it in the ninth verse, in the tenth verse, well, not the tenth verse, the ninth verse, he puts a new twist on it. Yeah, that Paul was a twister. He uses a different word in verse 9. He uses the word Philadelphia. That has nothing to do with Elton John's song. <laughs> All right. Although it was the play on the word Philadelphia in the, mu in the, in the movie with Tom Hanks. That was why they set that there. A little background there I learned from one of my sons. Uh, listen. Listen to verse 9 again. I'm going to read it to you from the King James Bible because truly, truly it expresses it best. As touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And I just explained to you how that happens. God pours that into you when you become His child. It is the fruit of the very Holy Ghost in your life as a believer. That's why I say to you, only Christians can love this way. Because this is a God thing. All right? And again, that does not say lost people can't love. Don't, boy, if, if I go out here and I'm set up at Champs or somewhere or with Three Sisters or somewhere or get me some gas and somebody walks up to me and goes to hollering at me and says, you said I couldn't love my kids. I'm all, all I want to know is who told you that? And I'm coming back here and throw you out of church. <laughs> I'm going to love you out of here. Now listen, listen. The first love mentioned in this verse is Philadelphia. The second uh, use of it in the passage, verses 9 and 10, is agape. Now, now, what does that mean? That means that we're to take this God kind of love that He has given us by the power of the Spirit and spread it upon every other brother and sister in Christ whom we fellowship with just like He told the Thessalonians to do. Listen to, listen to verse uh, uh, 10 here again. Listen, listen to it. What, what did he say? What? What did he say? He said, For indeed you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. Thessalonica was in Macedonia. All right? And, but we urge you to do it more and more. That's what he said here. Wow. Friends, listen. Brotherly love is the love with the God kind of love that Christian brothers and sisters are to give to one another in the body of Christ as the whole and the church, the local manifestation of the body of Christ that they're in. Especially in particular. Yeah? Bind us together, that song. That's exactly, that, that is brotherly love. That is Philadelphia. That, that is the song. That is the basis. That means we, those of us who are part of McDowell First Baptist Church, this here church, this church right here, this one, where y'all are, where you come, put your membership. Some people, you ever hear how people say, I need to move my membership. Slow southern ears like mine, I, I have to, now what did they say? Move my membership. Don't move my letter. <laughs> There's no such thing as that. But anyway, that's another sermon another day. Listen, that means that we, who are part of this body, are to love one another with the kind of love that comes only from God. Wow, big eat right there. That would stop a lot of stuff, wouldn't it? If we loved each other. Like this. That mean that you wouldn't be mean to one another. It wouldn't be like Josie Wells. Live by the feud. Right? Preacher, where do you get your illustrations from? Everywhere. <laughs> it only comes from God. That, that love is agape love. It's a love that is sacrificial. Remember? 
It cares, it gives, it works for another person, no matter how that person may respond. I know that's hard, but that's exactly what God said for us to do. That's hard. Definitely hard for me. I was not wired that way. We're to treat one another. We're to treat the one we have chosen to love, and that's supposed to be every brother and sister we have in a sacrificial way. That means I don't have to claim my rights all the time. When you're dealing with your children sometimes, you can't claim your rights, can you? you you've got to lay your rights down and help that young one, right? I mean, that's how that works, okay? That's how God wants us to love one another. Not only does He want us to love each other with a sacrificial love like He's taught us, like He's poured into us, but He wants us to increase in it more and more. Just as the verse says, this kind of love we're seeing here in, verse Thess- in, in 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 9, and 10 cannot be content with what it has already done. Oh, yeah. Well, it is pushed, pushed, impelled to do more. It does not keep score. Now, ladies, you don't need to keep score on your husband. You know, when he does something crazy. And men do that. Yeah. And you don't pull out that book. And say, yeah, and I told you this other day, and I told you this other day, and I told you this other day, and here you are again today. Yeah. You know. And men, you don't keep score either. It doesn't... <laughs> This kind of love never does quit. It don't quit. All right? Don't quit. Don't quit. It keeps pouring itself out like Niagara Falls. You all seen Niagara Falls? That's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. Actually, actually, it is to be like Jesus who poured himself out on the altar of God to save us. Listen to this quickly right here. Matthew 26, 27, and 28. Here it is. Here, here, right here it is. Here's the core of it all. Listen. And when he had taken a cup, now remember this was the, at the Last Supper, when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, the covenant, which is what? Poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Poured it out. That love. Same word, by the way. Same exact word. Now, why would Jesus use that? Because He is God. Just as Jesus poured out His love and sacrifice for every one of us, we are to pour out our love to overflowing upon each other as brothers and sisters. Yeah. Now, look. That's that's a lot. That's a lot bigger than any song that any rock star ever sang. Okay, yeah, that's a lot bigger than that boy told you I love you forever, darling. A lot bigger than that, a lot bigger than that. Come on now, y'all know I'm right. This comes from God and God alone. And he gives it to all of his children. He poured it into us, Romans 5, 5. It's right there. And he fully expects us. See, it's not a suggestion. He fully expects us to love each other that way. I don't know who I was talking to. Man, I, sometimes I don't want to slap my own face. I can't remember things. I don't know who I was talking to. I was talking to, I think it was a bunch of guys in this church, you know, the other day. Maybe it wasn't just guys, but this church, now no joke, you're sitting right here. When you get together and some of you pray, God does do miraculous things. I have watched that in the time I've been here. I've seen that happen. And it ain't because of me. It just, it, 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 it's God stuff, and y'all have done that. I would be, and you would be, it would be amazing to see what God did if the whole body got together and prayed that way, wouldn't it? Well, God might move mountains. Ah, this is what, yeah, as y'all. He might take that mess out there where you have to circle around to get here 
you know, circle the plant to get to the church out there. See, the hospital's just right out there in the backyard. You know, <laughs> that's what they told me. The hospital's just right there. It ain't really. <laughs> but we, maybe if we all got to get in front, maybe the mountain would move. I don't know. Uh, I said this, maybe Carrie's Bridge would get finished. We all pray. I don't know. Maybe with Frankfurt. Said, we pray until you fix that road, boy. I don't know. But listen to me. If we love each other this way. Now, we have the ability. Don't say you don't have the ability because to say you can't means you don't know Jesus. Now, I, I, I went to a great length to explain that to you. That's real. You do it on your own. You, you work it out on your own. I'll help you. That really is what it means. We really are to love each other with godly love in the household of faith. Now, lost people can love one another, and they do. And lost people love us. I got lost friends. Well, I know a couple. I was thinking of a guy the other day that risked his life twice for me. And he's lost as a goose, but he did. Two times. Yeah, they can love you. But this love we're talking about only comes by the outpouring of the Spirit because of the blood of Christ that has been shed abroad in our hearts, making us the children of God. Thereby the Holy Spirit comes to reside in us. That's real. That's biblical. Okay? Now, I'm talking to the church the whole day today because I you know, I, it'd be wonderful to see this. And it's not that it can't happen. It's not that, well, we can't do that. Yes, you can. What I have to do is get me out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Right. Does that make sense? That's what you have to do, too. I'm always in the way there, you know. That will of God in my life keeps bumping into me sometimes. And I need to get out of the will of God's way so he can do what he needs to do. And I'm going to tell you something. When I preach sermons like this, it's hard on me. Because it was hard on me. You know, I, now, I don't think before I was saved, I loved anybody. I don't. Well, I think I love Charlie. I do. I'm, well, I know I did. And that store gay stuff. I, I, I'm, I, I know I did. Still love him. You know. But, listen. But I had to learn after I got saved what this means. Because I'm cynical, untrusting. People walk up to you and say, <laughs> I've had young preachers talk to me and say, they're crying over the phone. They say, Preacher, they told me they were going to love me unconditionally, and this morning they asked me to move. <laughs> I said, Son, you, you got you know, this is growing. You know, this is a growing lesson here. You know? But the rest of that lesson is, but you've got to love them no matter what. See, we all have to do that. Now, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, look. Yeah, I, I don't doubt you love your family with all your heart and soul. I, I believe that. I, and I just know that's true. That, that's just true. It, it, it's wrong when people say, you can't. Really. Yes, you can. But if, but if you give your life to Christ... And when God pours this into you, you will be able to love in such a way that you don't fathom right now, if you will, if, if we will, you know, see, if we will, see. You can love one another that way. A guy needs to learn to love his wife, well, if, he, if he'll recognize this right here, he will. A lot of times he'll say, oh, that's okay, honey, and mean it. That's all right, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's right, man. She'll say, that's all right. I know you forgot my birthday, but that's okay. I love you anyway. I know you got a lot on your mind. Don't do it next year. That happens. We need to love one another. I'm going to ask the ladies to come and lead us in an invitational hymn.
I know it's a late hour, but every first Sunday of the month is always late because we do a lot of things. We're going to love on these kids. I don't. We're going to love on them babies because they need to be loved on. I'm so glad to get to uh, introduce the fact that Lexi, and, and Lexi knew Jesus before she talked to me. That, that became evident in the dialogue. But I'm so glad to tell you that baby's going to be baptized. We're so glad that, that, that the acres are going to be baptized next week. All that's great. And sometimes we're a little longer. But I've got to get this to you because that's what I'm called to do. And, and God is, a, he, he, he's teaching me to love people more today than I ever did. I mean, at the funeral the other day, an old boy come up to me. I knew him years ago. Me and him built the church together. Well, and some other fellers too. He's a dynamite man. Worked with Kenneth, Austin Powder. He was talking to me. And I even said in the funeral, I said, now Smokey has been with me. When I've done funerals, I don't shed a tear. It didn't bother. I could, I could do, I, actually, I said this way. I could do three funerals in a day, not shed a tear. Because I did, but I can't hardly get by now. It seems like these days I'm doing one, two things. Either I'm a crying over something or laughing myself to death. One of the two. You know, I, but I'm learning to love you. Now, you know, now some of you are aggravating. I think, what's the matter with you? You know, and your problem is I'll just say it, right? Some of, some of you guys, preacher asked me what's wrong with me. Well, answer him. <laughs> or let him tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Listen. If you're lost, meet Jesus. Your life may be going well and good. you loving people. Do things for people all the time. You'd give them the shirt off your back or the last dollar in your pocket. Or go borrow one from your brother-in-law to give them. If you didn't have one. But if you'll meet Jesus... He will show you why you do that. And that is amazing. That's as far as my brain can go to explain that. I can't go further. than I don't know how. I want to know how, and I'm begging God to teach me how. But as far as I can go at the moment, give your life to Christ. And church, now you get on your knees and ask God to help you love each other. Lay down them swords and shields and love one another. Father, have your way in our lives. Teach us and lead us. We know you love us, and you, you have loved us, and we're not worthy of it. We're just not. We never will be, but you do. And we praise you for that. And now we know that you called us to love each other. God, help us. God, help us. God, help some youngin out there somewhere to come along and say, I like to go to that church because they love me down there. Hey, Lord, please. And Father, for those that are lost, help them to see right now and just surrender all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand, we stand.